Hi, welcome to why the Poisson distribution is important. So, question. What do radioactive decay and winning the lottery have in common? So they, and a lot of other phenomena, are described well by the Poisson distribution. In this video, we'll be talking about the Poisson distribution and why it's important. So first, we'll talk about the circumstances under which the Poisson distribution arises. We'll give several examples of Poisson distributions in nature and in everyday life. We'll then discuss some features of the distribution. There won't be much math in this lecture. We'll derive the Poisson distribution in a companion video. Okay, so let's say we have some event which occurs randomly, but whose probability of occurring per unit time, r, is constant. For example, the event may occur, on average, 5.2 times per century, so r would be 5.2 divided by a century, or 437 times per second, in which case r would be 437 over seconds. As r is a constant, the probability for the event to occur in a time interval t is independent of how many other times the event has occurred, or when. We say that the separate occurrences of the event are uncorrelated, or independent. Now, let's say that we want to know the probability of this event happening m times in some time interval t. So for example, for an event with r equals 5.2 per century, we may want to know the probability of it happening once, twice, three times, or not at all in the next decade. So the answer to this question is the Poisson distribution. It looks like this. So we have p of m given rt equals rt to the m e to the minus rt over m factorial, where m factorial is m times m minus 1 times m minus 2 all the way down to 1. And e is the base of the natural logarithm. So p of m given rt is the probability, given the rate r and the time t, of the event occurring m times in t. So an event with a probability of occurring per unit time, r, will occur on average rt times in a time interval t. So let's define lambda equal rt. Then we can rewrite the Poisson distribution as p of m, given lambda, as lambda to the m, e to the minus lambda, over m factorial. And this form using lambda is especially convenient for some cases, as we'll see later. Now that we've seen what the Poisson distribution is and when it arises, let's look at some examples. So we're looking for cases where the separate occurrences of an event are, to a good approximation, uncorrelated. Okay, let's check them out. So one example of a Poisson process from physics is radioactive decay. Let's say that we have a radioactive sample. It contains a very large number of radioactive nuclei, each of which has a tiny probability of decaying during some measurement time, t. The nuclei decay independently and do not affect each other. OK, so let's say that this sample has, on average, 0.31 decays per second. And you monitor the sample for 10 seconds. What is the probability that one decay occurs during this time? Two? Three? None at all? So here, lambda is equal to 0.31 decays per second times 10 seconds, which equals 3.1. So we plug that into our equation to get the Poisson probability of m decays given that lambda is 3.1. OK, so here we've made a table of the Poisson probability for m equals 0 to 7, and we've also plotted it for m equals 0 to 13. And so note that the probability peaks at m equals 3, which is very close to lambda, which equals 3.1. OK, so now let's move on to another example. So let's say that a golf course has a hole in one occur on average once every 35 days at their location. So a hole in one requires a large amount of luck. So to a good approximation, they should really be independent events. So what is the probability distribution for m holes in 1 to occur in 4 weeks, 1 year, 10 years? Let's start with t equals 4 weeks. So 4 weeks is equal to 28 days, and r was 1 over 35 days. So lambda in this case, which equals rt, 
is equal to 28 over 35, which equals 0 0.8. So we'll substitute lambda equals 0 0.8 into our formula for the Poisson distribution. So here we give the Poisson probabilities for m ranging between 0 and 4, given that lambda is equal to 0 0.8. And we also plot the Poisson distribution on the right. So the most likely number of holes in one is zero. But getting one or two is not so unlikely. And if you were to ask the question, what is the probability of getting at least one hole in one in four weeks? The answer is greater than 50%. Okay, so now let's go on to the case of one year. So here, lambda, which is still equal to RT, is equal to 365 over 35, which is about 10.4. So here we'll just plot the Poisson distribution for lambda equal to 10.4. It peaks at m equals 10, which is again very similar to lambda. And if we look at the case for 10 years, so here lambda is equal to RT, which equals about 104.3. So again, we'll just plot that, and it peaks at m equals 104. So for large values of lambda, the Poisson distribution approaches another distribution, which is called a Gaussian, or a normal distribution. In such cases, a Gaussian is usually a very good approximation, and it's easier to use because it doesn't have any big factorials in it. Now, Gaussians are extremely useful and show up in lots of contexts, so we'll talk about them in other videos. Okay, so let's look at another example. So let's say that a warehouse is illuminated by 1,000 light bulbs. These light bulbs fail randomly at a rate of 0.7 light bulbs per day and are replaced as soon as they fail. On average, 0.7 bulbs fail per day, 4.9 fail per week, etc. The number of light bulbs that fail per hour, per day, per week, per month, per year, etc. would follow a Poisson distribution. Of course, if some event occurs that damages a bunch of light bulbs, for example, if there's an accident or a large temperature change in the warehouse, then the bulb failures will no longer be Poisson distributed. The Poisson distribution can also be used to describe situations other than some event happening as a function of time. For example, it is also useful for describing rare events in a population. Let's say that there is a lottery where the odds of winning are 1 in 100,000, and this week 347,000 people play the lottery we'll assume that the lottery numbers are chosen randomly. So the average number of people we would expect to win the lottery this week is 347,000 divided by 100,000, which equals 3.47. So that's an average. However, the number of winners will be Poisson distributed with lambda equal to 3.47. Now, strictly speaking, this situation is described by the binomial distribution which deals with discrete events like individuals buying lottery tickets, and not the Poisson, which deals with events which happen on a continuum like time. But the Poisson distribution is an excellent approximation here. And like the lottery examples, we could also consider the incidence of some rare disease which randomly pops up in a population. For example, if one in 275,000 people gets this disease, we could ask how many people would have the disease in, say, a city of 3 million people or a country of 17 million people. The number of people getting the disease would be Poisson distributed. But we should note that in this example, we are assuming that the rate of the disease is constant throughout the population. This assumption fails, for example, if the disease runs in families, as a large extended family with the disease may live mainly in a single city. And like the lottery example, strictly speaking, the binomial distribution is appropriate here, but again, the Poisson distribution is an excellent approximation. Okay, so we'll briefly mention a few features of the Poisson distribution. So as we've seen before, if a quantity is Poisson distributed with parameter lambda, its average value is lambda. Additionally, the variance of the distribution is lambda. So this means that as lambda increases, the width of the distribution goes as the square root of lambda. Also, let's say that you have two independent Poisson processes with different rates. They could be the decays of two radioactive samples, or the occurrence of holes in one at two different golf courses, 
Or you could even look at the case where one of them is the decay of a radioactive sample and the other is holes in one at a golf course. But for concreteness here, let's take the case of two radioactive samples. So sample one has an average of lambda one decays in a time t, and sample two has an average of lambda two decays in a time t. So we'll observe the two samples for a time t. The numbers of decays from each of the two samples, m1 and m2, are Poisson distributed, so their probabilities are the Poisson of m1 given lambda 1 and the Poisson of m2 given lambda 2, respectively. If you look at the total number m, which equals m1 plus m2, of radioactive decays in a time t, the result is also a Poisson distribution with lambda equals lambda 1 plus lambda 2, so Poisson of m given lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So if we have two independent Poisson distributed variables, their sum is Poisson distributed too. So hopefully I've convinced you that the Poisson distribution is important and describes a wide range of phenomena. In a companion video, we'll derive the form of the Poisson distribution. We'll also use the form of the Poisson distribution to derive the also very important Gaussian distribution also known as the normal distribution, in another lecture. Thanks for watching!